Ladies and gentlemen, in this video we would like to present the work in the field of experimental archaeology that is being carried out in Poland. We divided this movie into three parts. The first one, history, covers the oldest research in this field that was carried out in our country. The chronological border for the information provided here is the year 2000. In the second part, science will present the most important scientific experimental archaeology studies that were carried out in Poland during the last decades. The third part of our movie is devoted to education and the popularization of the experimental archaeology in our country. We really wanted our movie to be as reliable as possible. However, if I accidentally missed someone in this presentation, we apologize. Have a good watching. Experimental Archaeology in Poland History, Science, Education, History Experimental archaeology in Poland has a long tradition of over 100 years. Stefan Krukowski work Form 1915 on the function of flint burins was the first published reference to using the experimental method in archaeology. In the 1920s, Ludwig Savitsky begins experimental studies on flint processing techniques. Next personalities worth mentioning are Jacek Delekta and Zdzisław Ryewski. In the future, they will go down in the history of Polish archaeology. While they were still students, they experimented with the production of stone axes at the Zutsevor excavation site in 1928. The real breakthrough and blossoming of Polish experimental archaeology came with the discovery of Biskupin in 1933. The person who started research in this area was Józef Korszewski. Thanks to the work of Professor Korszewski a decision was made to build a reconstruction of the wooden wall and the residential buildings. The main principles of this project were based on architectural research and the reconstruction of construction techniques. During the construction from 1935, many experiments with woodworking were carried out. These included processing techniques as well as the use of bronze and antler tools. In 1937 Ryevsky first attempted to process bone and antler in Biskupin, which he would continue in the 1940s. Further development of the experimental works was interrupted by the outbreak of the Second World War. After the end of the war, work on the reconstruction of the settlement and, thus, further experiments starts again. The site becomes a center for experimental archaeology and an experimental base for researchers from many institutions. Among other things, some of the first observations of subdepositional processes were carried out here. Another scientist, Borgimes Horwubovitz, was an essential figure in experimental research. Just before the start of the war in 1938, he carried out the first experiments on pottery production technology from sourcing raw materials to firing finished products, based on materials related to the Lusatian culture. He tried techniques for making small vessels and objects, such as spinners, animal figurines, and rattles from a single piece of clay. In the 1940s, he continues his research into pottery, extending his work to include potter's wheels of various types, experiments with coatings, smoothing and shining vessels, and techniques of applying ornaments. In September 1951, the first archaeological training camp for archaeology students took place in Biskupin where many experimental works were done. These camps continued in the late 1950s and early 1960s, providing a testing ground for many Polish archaeologists. On many occasions, in addition to the students, scientists from various Polish archaeological centers participated in the camps, demonstrating techniques for processing different types of raw materials and carrying out experimental studies with the students, such as spinning yarn, pottery making or food processing. Among other things, several experiments involving smoking fish in pits in the ground were carried out, confirming the interpretation of some early medieval features as smoking pits. Works with grinding wheat in quern stones, boiling water in clay vessels of the Lusatian culture, roasting fish on a hearth in a reconstructed house, baking flatbreads and roasting grain were also carried out. It is worth mentioning that the experimental works when they were conducted were often open to the general public. One of the persons involved in experimental studies with the students was Tadeusz Jekoyski, who researched smithing techniques and casting bronze items, including the lost wax casting process. In the 1950s Kazimierz Zurowski began his experimental research with the softening of osseous raw materials at Ostrów Lednicki. 
His first attempts, involving soaking and boiling in water with ash, did not bring the desired results. They were only obtained by treating the raw material with vegetable acids, particularly sorrel. Zurovsky continued his experiments with softening osseous raw materials in the 1970s, using substances containing natural acids such as lactic acid in sour milk. In 1955, during a training camp in Biskupin, archaeology students built a small hut. The following year, on the 10th of August 1956, the building was burned down with the equipment inside. Descriptive, photographic and film documentation was made, leaving the burned area for later excavations. It was the world's first experiment of its kind, ahead of similar, more famous Danish experiments. Other Polish researchers who pioneered experimental archaeology in Poland were Zorfa, Zoya Korwar Safryska and her husband Wojciech Safryski. Wojciech Safryski conducted, among other things, the first experiments with the production of birch tar. These were inspired by the discovery of pits with traces of burning containing roasted bark at the early medieval settlement site. The hypothesis put forward was that they were birch tar pits. The experiments carried out by Safryski on several occasions fully confirmed this interpretation of the discovered features. Zorfakor Wars. Safryska together with Wojciech Horwubowicz mentioned earlier conducted studies on pottery techniques used from the Neolithic to the early Middle Ages. They experimented, among other things, with hand-forming techniques, production using potter's wheels of various types, decorative techniques, and firing pottery on open hearths and in pottery kilns. Horwubowicz's experiments were also based on the knowledge gained during his ethnographic research. A part of his work was also conducted in a laboratory in Wrocław. The studies of Safryska and Horwubowicz led to the establishment of a short-lived experimental workshop and an exhibition of pottery techniques in Biskupin. Further researchers worth mentioning are Kazimes Belenin and Metzisław Radvan as well as Adam Mazur Elzbeta Norsek and Václav Ruzajski. They carried out numerous experiments devoted to the smelting and processing of iron. The basis for their research, carried out since the late 1950s, were archaeological discoveries of the remains of prehistoric metallurgy in the region of the Schwentorxiske Mountains. Their works mainly concerned the construction of smelting furnaces, the method of smelting metal from local hematite ore and the quantity and quality of iron obtained in the process. They also conducted experiments on producing charcoal from pine and beech wood in charcoal piles. The results of the above research allowed a proper assessment of the technical skills of the iron smelters and the importance and scale of metallurgy in the region. It is also worth mentioning that their work contributed to the creation, in September 1967, of the first public open demonstration of iron smelting using the method used 2,000 years ago, i.e. the first Dimarki Schwentorxiske in Nova Swupa which was the oldest archaeological festival in Poland. An example of other ironworking experiments was the 1975 work by Gerard Wielke and Anze Kola on the production of crossbow bolt heads. The basis of their research was medieval artifacts from a settlement in Swarsevi where numerous crossbow bolts were found together with iron, bars in one feature. The experiment replicated the technology used to produce the crossbow bolts, with each bar producing two bolt heads ending with a pin or sleeve. Interesting experiments conducted by a few Polish researchers were works devoted to cremation. These involved burning funeral pyres with individual human bones whole animals and human bodies with different items such as metal, glass and ceramic objects. They investigated the effect of the burning process on the morphology of the bones, the issue of preservation of diagnostic features on the bones, the duration of cremation and the cooling of the burial piles. In the 1970s and 1980s Bogdan Baltzer carried out experimental research on flint working techniques including studies on the time of making products of various types from different varieties of flint and surveys on harvesting tools, made from blades of Shvecheku flint. He also made experimental reconstructions of Neolithic flint and stone workshops. At that time 1970s to 1980s Jerzy Tomas Bornbell at Ksemonki or Potovske was experimenting with shafting, by facial daggers, most of which, as it later turned out, served as functional knives and daggers. He also experimented with using a flint axe to cut down trees. Another researcher Wojciech Bzyzyski conducted studies on the production of early medieval horn combs, 
He showed that producing them using a saw, knife, and abrasive stone was possible without softening deer antlers. In the 1980s Vitor Miguel begins his experimental research on flint napping. At that time, he carried out, among other things, experiments on the morphology of splintered cores and the possibility of their use in various activities in the Younger Stone Age. Vitor Miguel and Zegors Kamiski undertake to explain the problem of ventilation of mining shafts in the Neolithic flint mine in Ksimonki or Patovske. In order to mining the flint it was necessary to burn fire in the mine's pivot point to force air circulation. Wojciech Portrowski was a researcher who went down in the history of experimental archaeology in Poland. The main subject of his interest was the technology of birch tar and pitch production. Thanks to his involvement, several experiments on the production of wood tar and pitch were carried out between 1st and 4th of July 1993 at the Archaeological Museum in Biskupin as part of the first international symposium on wood tar and pitch. In 1995, the first archaeological festival in Biskupin took place. It is the largest and longest archaeological festival in Poland. For many Polish archaeologists and archaeology students, it was the place where they had their first encounter with experimental archaeology. In the 1990s, one of the people conducting intensive experimental work on flint processing techniques was the previously mentioned Witold Miguel. Examples of his research in the 1990s include experiments on flint axe production techniques published in collaboration with Sławomir Sawaczewski. Another exquisite flint napper with vast experience in experimental studies on flint processing techniques is Portrad Morkowski. He also researched prehistoric archery and organized the Biskupin archery tournaments. An essential figure in the development of experimental archaeology in the Torunyi is Yolanta Mauetska Kukavka. Her research interests focus on the Neolithic of Central Europe, prehistoric flint working, traseology, and the history and methodology of archaeological research. She started creating the first experimental tool base for comparative analysis for traseological studies. She published the first traceological handbook in Polish, a translation of the book by Galina Fedorovna Korobkova. Focused on studying the function of prehistoric tools using the useware analysis. Thanks to her commitment, she and a few of her students could participate between July and August 1995 in the fifth edition of the International School of Traceology, an experimental archaeology organized by the Institute for the History of Material Culture of the Russian Academy of Sciences. In St. Petersburg, with the participation of the Admirt State University in Izevsk, Russia, nearly 40 scientists and students from Russia, Ukraine, Morocco and Poland participated in the lectures on various aspects of traceological research and experimental works. Their scope included making replicas of flint tools and multiple activities related to working in wood, bones, antler, hides and shells. The results also included cutting grass and reeds, archery, spear throwing, etc. Thanks to work of Yolanta Mauetska Kukavka, a two-week series of lectures and laboratory classes was held in April 1996, conducted for students of Institute of Archaeology Nicolas Copernicus University, under a guidance of Prof. Galina Fedorovna Korobkova. Finally, it is worth mentioning Maugorzata Maukiewicz's experiment on the molding of bell-shaped beakers, glass vessels popular in the Polish lands from the late 16th to 18th centuries. The work was designed to reconstruct and learn the details of the production technique involving wooden bipartite molds and the freehand blowing method. The above experiment made it possible to observe the details of the production technique, confirmed the hypothesis of their mass production and showed that it was possible to produce them more efficiently. We have presented only a small part of the vibrant history of experimental archaeology in Poland. The stories delivered here have certainly inspired a lot of modern researchers and their experimental studies. Science Experimental archaeology is a widely used scientific research method at four leading universities in Poland. These are Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, University of Warsaw, University of Wrocław, and Nicolas Copernicus University in Toruń. Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. Until 2019, at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań one of the main researchers who used the experimental archaeology method was 
Katazina Pizevitz. Her works were mostly connected to traceological studies on prehistoric flint collections. The importance of these works is evidenced by many publications presenting the results of different experimental programs, often conducted in collaboration with specialists in ancient crafts, especially flint knappers like Portrait Morkowski Vitalt Miguel and Vitalt Grus from the State Archaeological Museum in Warsaw. Also, in her books Pizevitz discusses in detail the roles and importance of experimental archaeology in scientific research. At Poznan University, Martek Szanowska and Mateusz Frankiewicz also led important experimental studies. Their research focuses on early medieval glass bead production, among others, to verify the hypothesis about the possibility of crafting complex mosaic glass beads on an open hearth. In Poznan the experimental studies are also performed newly by Ivona Sopkovac tabaka and Aldona Kuzavska. Their works are focused on the effect of the admixture of shells on the ceramic mass and their potential impact on the pH of cooked dishes. University of Wrocław There are a few researchers using experimental archaeology in their studies at the University of Wrocław. They include, among others Bernadette kufel dakowska an expert in traceological analysis. One of her most important projects was dedicated to changes in methods of plant use in the light of technological transformations. In Lower Silesia between the 6th and the break of the 3rd and 2nd millennium BC. Recently Kufel Dakowska started a new research project focused on the economic, social and symbolic meaning of the macrolithic stone artifacts of the Neolithic societies in southwest Poland. During these studies, she used useware analysis combined with experimental studies, petrographic analysis, and many more. An important element of this research are the experiments conducted by Kufel Dakowska together with Aleksandra Gavron Simczak regarding the identification of residues. In Wrocław experimental studies with the use of stone tools are also conducted by Marcin Korny and Jarosław Bronowicki. Their works focused on macrolithic stone tools analysis from a technological and functional perspective. Both researchers collaborate with Kufel Dakowska. Very often small experimental projects are a part of bigger studies, such as for example works performed by Gzegors Mikalets, that have been carried out to verify the possibility of using direct percussion technique with a hard hammer in the production and reduction of giant stone cores with Kombewa method. But not only stone tools are under the scope of researchers from Wrocław. Very interesting experimental works are also conducted by Dagmara Wachak. She focuses on archaeometry and experimental research in the study of archaeological pottery, mostly from the Bronze Age and the Early Iron Age. One cannot forget about the experimental works of Tomasz Pornka conducted often in cooperation with Marcin Dakowski. Pornka specializes in prehistoric ornamental technologies applied to osseous artifacts. These studies are subordinated to bigger projects relating to prehistoric art. At Wrocław University there is also conducting research on the reconstruction of the production methods of metal tools in the late Bronze Age. Until recently, these works were carried out there by Kamil Novak. University of Warsaw In Warsaw, the most important projects in the field of experimental archaeology realizes Agata Lanowska. She conducts numerous experiments focused on textile production in the context of finds from the Aegean cultures. Other smaller projects are performed among others by Aleksandra Tsetfiska and colleagues. Her most recent works were devoted to vessel surface smoothing techniques in prehistory and the effects of adding beeswax to the adhesives. Nicolas Copernicus University in Torumi Nicolas Copernicus University in Torumi At the Institute of Archaeology NCU exists the Traceological Laboratory, which provides technological and functional analyses of different types of prehistoric artifacts made of various raw materials. Most of the experimental works performed here are subordinated to the projects connected with traceological analyses of the prehistoric artifacts. Leading researchers at the part of the studies focusing on the stone products are Yolanta Mauetska Kukavka and Gzegors Orshiporvitz. Among many completed projects that were related to the studies on prehistoric stone tools, experiments with plant processing in the Mesolithic are worth mentioning. 
These studies were focused on the function of the so-called curved knives and allowed to suggest some hypotheses in regard to their primary function. Orshiporvitz studied also the traces resulting from the using the flint products as arrowheads. Another study presents the results of his research on the function of the very interesting polished flint products that are discovered at the Baltic coastal sites dated late Neolithic. The experimental studies conducted for the needs of this project allow to definite the characteristic of the use where traces, creating on tools of this type and to suggest their probable function. Currently, at Nicolas Copernicus University a huge part of the traceological studies conducted focuses on the technology and function of the prehistoric osseous artifacts. These studies are supported by the residue analysis. Developed for some time already in this center thanks to the collaboration with Dante Laboratory operating at Sapienza, University in Rome. What is important, most of the experiments is carried out as part of various grant projects. An important element of these studies are works focusing on various techniques of processing bone raw material in prehistory. These analyses are mainly carried out by Justina Orwowska and Grzegorz Orshiporvitz and were summarized in many articles. As an example, we can give here the experimental works being a part of the studies focusing on the function of the early Holocene, heavy-duty bevel-ended tools, thanks to the realized experimental program, and use where analysis conducted the researcher were able to give the first suggestions concerning the function of such artifacts, from the area of Poland. One of the most interesting experimental programs carried out in Toruni was research aimed at interpreting the function of the specific subneolithic tools made of seal bones, so-called seal scrapers. A rich collection of such tools comes from a complex of sites in Sventoi, Lithuania, where attempts to determine their original function have been made for several decades. Thanks to the experimental studies, traceological analyses, and residues tests carried out in the Toruni center, it was possible to determine the method of using these products. They were used to process hides, probably seal ones, with an admixture of arca as an ingredient that improves processing. Research on bone artifacts from Sventoi and other Mesolithic and Subneolithic sites on the southeastern coast of the Baltic Sea is also related to another experimental project, which concerned the use of pendants made of animal teeth found in large numbers in graves from the mentioned periods. Experimental studies and related traceological analyses made it possible to determine the differences in the technological production. Processes of these products at different sites, to interpret the method of attaching pendants to clothes and wearing them, and to determine their symbolic role in funeral rites. Many of the works carried out in the Toruni Center are also devoted to the methods of ornamenting bone products in prehistoric Europe. These projects allowed us to observe many behaviors of a symbolic nature, such as the ritual erasing of decorations. They became the basis for a discussion on the flow of bone artifacts between the Neolithic zone of Central Europe and the hunter-gatherers of Northeastern Europe. Another interesting experiment was performed in the context of the method of using Paleolithic antler hammers. During the experiments, researchers tested many possible actions that could be made using these tools, enabling them to interpret the function of the Gravetian artifact from Bishnik Cave in Poland. An extremely interesting experimental program carried out in the Toruni Center was devoted to Mesolithic bone artifacts discovered in the chocolate flint mine in Oroyskor. Some of the experiments were carried out in the Neolithic banded flint mine in Ksemonki or Patovske. These studies made it possible to define some types of traces of use formed on bone wedges used to excavate flint lumps from a limestone block. This made it possible to discover and define the functions of probably Europe's oldest mining tools of the discussed type made of bone. In Toruni for many years are performed also experimental studies aimed to reconstruct the various methods of birch tar production in prehistory. The researchers from this center proposed and tested experimentally the method of production of this substance without the use of pottery, which could have been used in the Mesolithic. One of the older, which of course does not mean that less important, experimental programs carried out in the Toruni Center were studies on methods of drilling holes in stone axes, and techniques of softening bone materials. Previous work in this area has been published in three articles and one book, but further research using much more modern analytical methods is planned. The Toruni Center also conducts experimental, 
and traceological research on the technology and function of bone products from the later phases of the Stone Age and the Metal Ages. Research of this type included studies on the methods of production and function of bone tools made of scapular bones from the fortified settlement of the Chinitz culture in Bruce Sevor, as well as multifaceted technological studies of the collection of wastes from the production of bone chisels that was discovered inside the funnel beaker culture waste pit at the Oswanki site. The latter research allowed confirming the use of copper in this period not only for the production of ornaments, but also for making everyday tools. Important experimental works were carried out in Toruny also by Magdalena Psamorska Stutska who uses archaeological experiments in her studies on the Late Bronze Age and Early Iron Age textile production. At Toruny Center many researchers are also dealing with the reconstruction of the production methods of metal tools. A good example are works performed by Pavel Kutsipera and colleagues with steel carburizing in a small shaft furnace, the so-called Aristotle process and studies on experimental production of hyperutectoid steel for the manufacture of early Middle Age swords. When we speak about university in Toruny, we cannot also forget about Eric Popkevitz. He was a longtime member of the Society for Experimental Prehistoric Archaeology, SEPA. He performed many experiments focusing on the reconstruction of the prehistoric and medieval techniques of amber processing. Kazimierz Velki University in Bydgoszcz. Besides those four main academic institutions smaller, often singular works are also carried out at other universities. A good example of such a project are experiments performed by Severi Pauk to determine the genesis of hole traces known as penitential holes or fire drill marks visible on the external walls of buildings, mainly sacral, often Gothic. Education Universities. Education in experimental archaeology, ancient techniques and reconstruction at the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. Currently, the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań conducts one course on issues related to experimental archaeology. However, when we spoke about Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, we cannot forget about experimental research an education carried out in the Biskupin Archaeological Museum by several students of archaeology associated with Experimental Stone Age Encampment. The idea of creating the experimental camp of the Stone Age was initiated in 1995 by Portrait Morkowski who led and developed the project in the first years of its operation. For several years, it has been implemented under the watchful eye of Katazina Pizevitz. Its primary goal is to popularize the oldest history of man and to conduct experimental archaeological research related to prehistory, but not only. The camp members write both bachelor's and master's theses and their first scientific articles. This project is a great example of the fruitful scientific and educational cooperation between the university, in this case Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań and the museum, here, the Archaeological Open Air Museum in Biskupin. University of Warsaw At the University of Warsaw, for classes related to experimental archaeology are currently being implemented. Courses include education in a variety of prehistoric and historic techniques, including, but not limited to, plant fiber processing techniques. At the same time, participants of the courses learn how to conduct experiments, effectively popularize archaeological knowledge, and what is the role of an archaeologist in public space. During the classes, examples of selected experiments and popular science events carried out in Poland and around the world are discussed. The classes are often attended by specialists in the ancient craft, such as experienced flint knappers. The University of Warsaw conducts very interesting classes devoted to ancient weaving techniques in the Mediterranean basin, particularly in Greece in the Bronze Age. The aim of the experiments undertaken during the course by the students is to learn the basics of ancient weaving techniques and complicated textile terminology through practical activities. Warsaw's Student Scientific Society of Experimental Archaeology brings together students, and not only, interested in experimental archaeology. The Society aims to broaden knowledge and promote experimental archaeology. As part of the activities of the Society, their members also carry out their experiments. 
University of Wrocław. Also, at Wrocław University, students are educated through experimental archaeology. A wonderful example here is the experiment devoted to spatial analysis of flint scatters, which was a part of the scientific program concerning the formation of flint artifact clusters at archaeological sites. The experiment was realized as a part of the classes entitled Technology of Archaic Human, Theory and Practice, which for more than a decade has been performed at the Institute of Archaeology of the University of Wrocław. Nicolas Copernicus University in Toruni. Experimental archaeology is extremely important for scientific research conducted at the Toruni Center, which is also reflected in the education of students. The Institute of Archaeology of the Nicolas Copernicus University in Toruni conducts several regular courses related to experimental archaeology. Some of them are classes realized in English. During the classes, students are introduced to processing techniques of the different types of raw materials that were used in prehistoric and historic times. However, a very important element of the classes is also independent experimental work conducted by students focusing on their research projects as part of bachelor's and master's research programs. These are comprehensive, strictly scientifically conditioned projects covering issues from all chronological periods. In these studies, students use the modern methodology and research equipment at the disposal of Nicolas Copernicus University. Extremely meritorious for the development of scientific research among Nicolas Copernicus University students but also their education and the education of the so-called wider audience, is the Society for Prehistoric Experimental Archaeology. The society was founded in 1998 and has been a place of education for many generations of experimental archaeologists. Apart from a huge number of conducted experiments, its members also organized dozens of festivals and archaeological shows throughout Poland, for which they were awarded numerous diplomas or other proofs of recognition of their activities. In 2001, the Society for Experimental Prehistoric Archaeology members organized its first two-week camp dedicated to experimental archaeology. During the camp, about 150 experiments of various types were made, but first and foremost related to the issues of the Stone Age. The most important was the reconstruction of the Mesolithic shallow pit house, built only with replicas of prehistoric tools. Society members planned and implemented several more camps of this type. Students from other Polish university centers also attended some of them. During their duration, many important experiments were carried out. For example, a method of producing tar without ceramic vessels was developed, and a drilling installation for making holes in stone axes was tested. In 2013, at the NCU Institute of Archaeology, members of the society, using only replicas of Stone Age tools, reconstructed a Mesolithic hut, and, a year later also a shallow pit house of the Goaki type. Both of these reconstructions became places of education for many generations of students, and guests of the institute in the following years. An important element of education and popularization of activities in the field of experimental archaeology carried out, at the NCU Institute of Archaeology is the publication of a quarterly newsletter entitled, Experimental Archaeology at Nicolas Copernicus University. It publishes reports on all activities in the field of experimental archaeology carried out in the past and currently in this center. In the summer of 2021, in Golub Dorbzini near Toruni the first international camp of experimental archaeology was organized. During two weeks, participants of the event, divided into two groups, undertook two complex archaeological experiments to create and test replicas of two archaic boats, a dugout and a leather-covered boat known more from ethnographic contexts as the so-called skin-on-frame canoe. During the project, participating students had an occasion to learn a lot about the different prehistoric techniques and tools. They also gathered knowledge about the organization of such complicated experiments, a knowledge that they will use in future similar projects. There are several dozen museum centers in Poland that deal with education with the use of experimental archaeology and, in general, with the promotion of archaeology. Here we will present the most important ones. Archaeological Museum in Biskupin is the best-known archaeological reserve in Central Europe. 
which protects the old defensive village from the turn of the Bronze and Iron Ages that people of the Lusatian culture inhabited. It was originally discovered in 1933. The museum in Biskupin is open all year round. Each year in the third week of September, the largest archaeological festival in Europe takes place. Bread is baked from the wheat ground on a quern, hand mill, clay pots are fired, sap and tar are made, and battles are organized. Similar performances are put on in May and June as well. Sopot, Stronghold, is the oldest settlement in Sopot, the branch of the archaeological museum in Dysk. The stronghold in Sopot is a remnant of an early medieval fortified settlement. This charming open-air museum is situated in a picturesque scenery of lush greenery and rustling streams. The reconstructed buildings of the settlement are presented here, huts, a gate and partly, a palisade, fence made of wooden piles. All elements of the development were reconstructed exactly in the places where their relics were discovered, i.e. the remains of authentic elements of buildings existing in the past. The mission of the Museum of the First Piasts at Lednica is to preserve in the collective memory the knowledge of the significance of Ostrów Lednicki and other early medieval strongholds in Greater Poland from the period of the formation of the Polish state. The museum is composed of four branches, which are independent exhibition bodies. The museum carries out broad-scale educational activity in two main parks archaeological reserve in Getzen Tzbovor, for which in 2015 it received the most prestigious museum award in Poland, the Sibylla Statuette. The educational activities aim to popularize the history of the region provoke interest in the historical origins of Poland and the cultural heritage of Greater Poland, and promote the universal values upon which the European civilization is founded. The educational department also organizes outbound educational activities for all age groups. Another important place is Metzisław Radvan S. Museum of Ancient Metallurgy of the Szwentorkowski region in Nowa Słupa. This institution's mission is to popularize the oldest technological traditions of the Sweto Kreisky region and share knowledge about research on a vast metallurgy site which functioned in the Schwentorxiske Mountains about 2,000 years ago. The Mu Museum organized practical workshops and museum lessons for all interested. However, the most important is the annual festival de Marki which takes place in summer. The culmination, and the most important part of each day of the de Marki festival is an attempt to obtain iron after several hours of smelting it in a slag pit furnace. The methods of this reverse engineering act are similar to the ones used by ironworkers from the Psevorsk culture. The whole event has a professional commentary from experts in archaeology, metallurgy and ancient history. Carpathian Troy Archaeological Open Air Museum It was created to protect and make the settlement available to tourists as a branch of the Podkarpaki Museum in Krosnor. The originator of the construction of the Open Air Museum in Chinitsa is Jan Gantsavsky. Director of the Port Karpatske Museum, Carpathian Troy is an original combination of the traditional form of an open-air museum and a modern museum facility. The entire complex consists of a historical settlement, a modern exhibition pavilion, an archaeological park, a breeding sector, experimental plots and a viewing platform. Center of Slavs and Vikings Vorlin Jonsborg Veneta organizes a Slavs and Vikings festival each year. The historical part of the festival is organized on Ostruf Island near Vorlin. Organizing this festival is related not only to the undoubtful historical inspirations, but also to the archaeological research conducted there for over a century. During the festival, Vikings, Slavs, Balts, Magyars, Ruthenians, and descendants of other peoples build the replicas of medieval camps, prepare food with the use of traditional methods, make pots, weave cloth, forge. Make copies of medieval jewelry of silver and bronze, sew shoes, and make chainmail armor. At the same time, on the Jivnal Lake, we can observe sailing replicas of Viking and Slav ships with dragon-shaped prows. The biggest attraction are battles during which we can see the clash of hundreds of warriors. Grogiskors Miovyska is an open theme museum and part of the Museum Nadvislyske in Kazimierz Dolny. The Zmiowiska settlement is, among others, an experimental archaeology center where, through experiments, its employees try to explore the secrets of ancient pottery, metallurgy, tar making, and food preparation. During the summer workshops of experimental archaeology, the group offers active participation in research projects. The Archaeological Open Air Museum, which is an original scenery and creates a unique atmosphere, enables stays and activities of reconstruction groups interested in the medieval period. 
that Scientific Society Prutenia Association's mission is to organize, conduct and support scientific research and to popularize knowledge about the history and culture of peoples and Baltic lands, with particular emphasis on the Prusai. An important example is also the Time Machine Archaeological Festival organized since 2008 in the Vecikovice Cultural Park. The festival's main objective is to present one of Europe's oldest and most valuable monuments, located in the Vecikovice Cultural Park Izbice Kuyavska Commune. These are the so-called megalithic tombs. Polish pyramids were erected by the people of the Funnelbeka culture in 3500 BC. The Battle of Grunwald. The battle was fought on 15 July 1410 during the Polish-Lithuanian Teutonic War, organized every year on the anniversary of the victory of the Polish and Lithuanian armies over the Teutonic Army. This is one of the largest events presenting the Middle Ages culture in Europe and, at the same time, one of the most important events for the Warmer and Masuria region in Poland. It has been organized since 1998. Thousands of reenactors and lovers of the Middle Ages from all over the world meet in the fields near Grunwald including from Germany, Italy, France, Finland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and even the United States and New Zealand. The highlight is the reenactment of the memorable Battle of 1410, involving around 1,250 historical reenactors.